Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the latest interview questions that were shared by our subscribers. So let us get started without wasting much time. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. So the company name you can see on the screen, role was for Tableau developer, obviously skill set majorly focused on Tableau stack and SQL majorly. So this was something that were expected. Now, the first question that was asked was, what is row level security? How can you apply it? See, whenever you know you are working on a data set that requires security, like say access you know, specific to managers or access specific to users that they don't want to, or they don't wish to uh, you know make visible to others, then in that situation, we can apply security to the data. Okay, so it can be your data security, it can be your you know dashboard suppression and all, it can be at different level. So if it is at a data level, what we can do, we can go to this server and we can create this user filter if you see here, right? So once I sign in, you will see this create a user filter option enabled and then you have to choose a field on which you, you want to apply the filter. Like say you want to apply it based on the username Okay, then you can apply or there are some, what you call functions that are available in Tableau that you can use. So if I go here and if I search for user here, you will see is member of, is username. These are the two functions that you can use to fit in your requirement and you can create again security here. Like say, I want to, you know, allow only to a specific group. Then I will write is username, okay? Or is is member of, I will write, okay? Because I want to search if this person is member of a particular group. Then if it is true, then I want that user to be, see that dashboard. So. What does is member of returns? Returns true if the current user is a member of the given group, okay? False otherwise, okay? So if that particular user is, is member of, I'll write, is equal to true. Here I'll write uh, whatever the group name I will write, like say, uh, broad group I'll write, example, uh, okay? And then I'll close it, is equal to true. So now whatever the user is there, it will search if that particular user is for a part of this group. If it is true, then it will give me true. Then I'll take this and I'll try to drop it on filter shelf and take only true value. Then in that case, it will filter out. You can do it at a calculation level. You can use it. You can do it at a DB level also. I think I have created a detailed video on this. When I had an active server, I'll paste the link of that in the description. You can watch it here. Okay, so that is one thing that was asked. Second is how to use parameter with action filters. So now what is you know, parameters and action filters? So when you want to pass a value to your parameter through action, that becomes your parameter action. So let us take a simple example. I just want to show you how the value is being assigned here. That is the intention. So for that, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create uh, a subcategory wise sales here. Okay, so I've taken subcategory. Maybe for your sake, I'll just recreate this. Okay, and I'll just take a subcategory here and uh, I'm going to take sales. Okay, now my, now my intention is I want to pass this sales value to my parameter. Okay, so what I'm doing first step, we need to create a parameter. So I'm writing, you know, uh, value of subcategory okay and i'm just selecting the data type here i want integer so i'm selecting integer and i'm selecting all values here nothing else okay click okay that's it okay now what do we need to do we need to pass this value how through actions right so for that sake i'm going to my dashboard and i'm just bringing this into my dashboard okay so let us just uh, adjust the height here i don't want that to go beyond the screen and uh, I'll just make it entire view and maybe sort it fine. Now I'm going to dashboard actions. Okay. So let us uh, remove this. I'm adding an action 
change parameter value because we want to assign value. So I'm selecting change parameter value. Now, when you do this, you want to assign this value to the parameter, right? So I'll just name that as parameter action. And from my dashboard to when I select the sheet tree, we want to select the parameter name. What is the parameter name that we have created? You know, value for this subcategory. I've selected that. What is the source field? Sum of sales because that is one we have used. Aggregation sum. So after that, how do you want to perform the action? I want to perform it on the select. So I've selected select. Clearing the selection will what? So what do you want a tableau to do when you're not selecting anything or you're clearing? I want just to set that to one or whatever, maybe zero also I can set, but I'm just keeping it whatever here and click on OK. And again, OK. Now I want to bring that value. So I'm just editing my title here. OK. And here I'm just pulling that parameter that we have created. That's it. OK. I'm making it bold. OK. Maybe I'll just uh, apply. OK. Now see here, because I've not selected anything, it is giving me one value, right? So what did we decide? When I'm not selecting anything or when I'm clearing the parameter, it should give me a default value. Fine. Okay, now when I select chairs, I want this 3,35,768 should be populated here. It is being passed. So what is happening here technically behind the screen, your value that it has on chairs is being passed to the parameter. Likewise, see a very simple use case to understand the navigation or how to create a parameter action. Okay, so there are multiple use cases if, you, if at all you need a dedicated video on parameter actions with multiple scenarios. You know, you can comment in the comment section. I'll just make it for you to make it easy. Okay, so that is again uh, this one. Please explain where fixed authority appears during execution. So for thing, I think you know when you see uh, Tableau filters execution, you will understand where that will come. Okay, so it is. Uh, just the execution of orders, how it appears first data source filters, you know, uh, extract filters and also that order you need to explain here. That should go. Now, what is data blending and what are the limitations of data blending here? See, blending is again a very important concept when it comes to Tableau. But what are the limitations here? So when blending, we all know in common that, okay, whenever uh, we have data from different sources, we apply blending clause, right? But what is that it is happening behind the screen that you need to understand one is understand how aggregation is happening here. Okay, second limitation on join. So you do not have the flexibility to select the join types you know, like how you have in join. So it 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 joins in a specific way. Uh, if I open the document here, okay. So what does happen here? Whenever you try to blend a data, okay, one will become your primary data source and then the other one is secondary data source. So this is one, you know, uh, this is how it tries to blend the data. Now here only you will understand one limitation. You cannot blend more than one data source, right? So you can only have, you know, only one data source, which means like one primary and secondary. So we can call it as two data sources or one secondary data sources. That is one you need to understand here. Okay. So you do not have the control over joints. So this is again the other limitations. So it, it works as an inner join logic here. Okay. So by default, whenever data matches, it brings you the result. But what is important here is the level of aggregations at a dimension level that you are trying to check. Okay, that is important. Okay, Tableau blends the data by aligning common dimensions between the two data sources, right? So if there is any common data source or field, like say region you are trying to blend, if that region is available in the in both the data source, in your primary data source and secondary data source, then it will try to pull the data. But again, what do we need to remember? We need to remember the aggregation. The blending occurs at an aggregate level after both the data sets have been independently aggregated. Okay, so blending 
occurs at an aggregated level after both the data sets have been independently aggregated. So this is something that you need to explain it to the interviewer, how data is being you know, pulled here. So first, you know, data is getting aggregated, then it is trying to blend. Okay, so that is one difference that is there. Okay, so you have uh, so three limitations we have discussed. One, you know, you cannot have more than one data source to blend. You know, you do not have control on the joins. It is by default, like, you no know, works as an inner join. You can talk about the aggregations. Again, that is one limitations. Okay, so these are something uh, about data blending that we can speak, you know, if he asks you about the data blending, how it works, what are the you know limitations or the concept here? Okay, so I hope you have got some clarity on this. If it does, you know, do mention your you know feedback in the comment section. You know, it gives me some motivation. Optimization in Tableau for Tableau dashboard. You know, there are many ways in which you can you know optimize your dashboard. One is design perspective. Okay, what type of uh, design structure is there? How many worksheets are there? Are they following the standards or not? That is one thing, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, data volume you have, you know, how did you uh, connect to your data source? Okay, are you using multiple joins or, you know, are you using a custom SQL? Are you applying any filters? All of that you can consider and you can improve the design of your, improve the performance of your, Tableau performance. But first thing for all of this that we can do is you can do a performance recording on your dashboard. That is when you will know what are the bottlenecks that are available. Based on that, you can take actions. Now, there is also an, another option that is available when you try to publish a dashboard. You know, it should, uh, you also have an option called as a run optimizer. When you run that, it will give you what are the standards that it is following or what are the actions that you needed. See, act, take action, update these items to follow best practices, won't impact workbook functionality. Now, if I take this, you know, multiple data, unused fields. So it is trying to suggest us, you know, what are the actions that we can take on our data source. So using this also, you can improve the performance of your Tableau report. Okay, so you can simply follow this, go to server, run optimizer, you will get actions, you take actions, and then you see of the 16, only 14 have been passed to our pending. Okay, so one needs review, what is that live connection? We again, we all speak about this only whenever we talk about optimization. We speak about this removing unused fields in that only they have created this pop up. Okay, the standard things that we discuss. That's about, you know, uh, performance improvement. Uh, so these were the questions related to Tableau that were asked. And then, you know, we had some questions related to SQL as well. How do you get all departments, even those without any employee? Now, this sounds a tricky. What you need to understand is from which table you need to pull the records or what is the left table and what should be the right table in this. So if you understand that, it is pretty straightforward question. Okay, so generally, what do we write? Suppose I have, you know, EMP table and I have department table. So he's telling that I need all the records from department table, even then it is null. So this will become my primary table and this will be my left table. And that is how I can join the table to get the record. Select the department number, D name and E name and E cell from department table left to join on EMP. So I will get all the records from this and matching records from this. Okay, so again, tell me the count of employees for each department. Again, this is a very straightforward question. We can simply write, you know, I think we should, we all should be able to write this. Select count star, or you can also write uh, count of e name, comma department number because for each department we need right from EMP table group by department number so simple query should give you the result for that okay i hope uh, uh, this is very clear difference between having and where again i think this question was asked in multiple places where 
having means you know it is applied after group by after aggregating it is like uh, but whereas where is not it is on like at a row level it is row by row it will try to filter simple we can write whereas select a star from uh, emp uh, where department number is equal to 20 something like that but whenever you have aggregated field you write group by and then on top of that you will write having clause having average salary something like that having sum of salary greater than 5000 something like that okay you can write on top of that it is not a complete statement i'm just uh, trying to tell you here okay so with that said i'm ending today's video i hope you have learned something new if it does don't forget to like share and subscribe see you in the next video till then bye bye and have a good day